Mysticism, written by Ernest Holmes, narrated by Jim Wentland. Our teaching has a very great deal of mysticism in it, and it should be more completely developed with the realization that mysticism is not mystery, just as intuition is not psychism. Half of the world and three-fourths of the world in our field, who should know better, mistake intuition for psychism and think if a person gets a hunch, they must be very spiritual, so most people mistake mysticism for mystery. Mysticism is not mystery, and psychism is not intuition, although many people in our field mistake these. Just as Buck said that cosmic consciousness is an awareness of our union with the whole and the unity of the whole, so mysticism is the perception of that wholeness in everything without fragments. When we use reason without fragments, we would very closely approach the axiomatic reasoning of the indivisibility of the unit, because there is nothing unlike it with which to divide itself, and that which remains indivisible has to be a total unit, and being a unit and indivisible, that is what they call the perception of omnipresence. Let's get this clearly in our mind. Mysticism is not mystery. Intuition is not psychism. Cosmic consciousness is some degree of a perception of the unity of the whole, the indivisible unity, and it means the unity. Mysticism is the perception of the whole in everything, and in none of these perceptions is there any degree of division at all. What I said this morning about forgivingness is true. I didn't make it up. It not only is one of the true perceptions of the ages and the mystical and intuitive perception of Jesus, because it was true, but it is now verified in modern science, and we find them doing this. Emerson said, When in our life, what is our life but an endless flight of winged facts or events in splendid variety? These changes come all putting questions to the human spirit. Here is the wisdom in this. Those men who cannot answer by a superior wisdom, these facts or these questions of time, serve them. This is a very great saying. The Bible puts it another way. It says, We are the servant of the thing we obey. Emerson said, We see what we animate, and we animate what we see. Mrs. Eddy said, Mortal mind sees what it believes, as truly as it believes what it sees. This is one of the great wisdoms of Emerson, because he perceived only one mind, and when he says these men who cannot answer by a superior wisdom will serve, that is back of why Jesus forgave people their sins. You see, we teach a law of cause and effect, which itself is an effect of a previous cause which has no cause and itself is not an effect. Therefore, all sequence of cause and effect are comprehended within it. Now we definitely teach in our technique cause and effect, and anyone who thinks he is going to get away from cause and effect thinks you are going to get away from it, but you can merely create a new sequence of cause and effect. If you passed into what the absolutionists think is an absolute state of being, you wouldn't be anywhere at all. You wouldn't be, and if God still is, you wouldn't know it. And so far as you were concerned, there would be nothing to know that God is. I personally do not believe there is any abstraction in the universe. If there were, we would never perceive it because our perception would be a concretion of that abstraction. It is unthinkable to me that there would be an intelligence that knows anything outside of, different or other than itself in a continuum, wherein eternal change takes place, is a play of life upon itself, but nothing is being accomplished as purpose. Does that seem strange to you? Dean Ng says an infinite purpose is a logical, mathematical contradiction, and the reason for that is that you cannot have an infinite incompletion. It would break up. Now Emerson said, 
a mind might ponder its thought for ages and not gain so much self-knowledge as the passion of love shall teach in one day. Isn't that an interesting thing? He places love above the intellect, and yet he was the most intelligent man America has ever produced. That is on history toward the last. I am skipping around. I like this. Man is his own star, and the soul that can render an honest and a perfect man demands all light, all influence, all faith. Nothing to him falls too early or too late. Our acts, our angels, are our good, our ill, or fatal shadows that walk by us still. And the next one casts the battling on the rock, suckles him with the she-wolf's teats. Wintered with the wind, and fox power and speed be hands and feet. You see, Emerson said, All institutions are but length and shadows of a man's mind, and a man should learn to detect and watch that gleam of light which flashes across his mind from within.